if you have any questions related to podcasting, streaming, and or uh, Christ following, or whether or not you're one, uh, I will be glad to take those questions and answer them as best as I can. My first question came uh, a little bit earlier, or at late, later last week. Uh, Dallas from Geek Devotions actually asked um, if I he if I thought there was anything that could be done about uh, are you when you were streaming to YouTube the video and the audio getting out of sync. And so you can tell you can tell us uh, Geek Devotions if this ended up working for you. But what I suggested in in OBS, which was the program him him and I used to stream and also he uses as well, I asked him, um, "Are you using constant bit rate or variable bit rate for your streaming?" And if you use variable bit rate, I think it it tries to guess it it streams. This, this is my layperson's explanation. I could be getting this a bit wrong. So if I am, let me know. <clears throat> uh, yeah, there's no really good place to put you. Oh, why don't I do that? Psh, nah, well, I mean, you're going to die anyways, but that's fine. Uh, I'm trying to decide if I want to keep a vec from moving up. I think I'll do that. Rather than just kill you outright, I'll have a vec just not move up. No, but then I'll die there. Let's not do that. You're just going to take a swim. Nah, that's what we'll do. No, why'd you do that, Francisco? Now he's in the same blast. Oh my gosh, Francisco, you weren't thinking. <laughs> I really wasn't thinking. Uh, so if you have a question, hopefully I'll think through it a little bit more than I just did that move. Reset. I don't want to lose my guy. Wow. Really, that was so not impressive. Okay, let's move you here. We'll move you here let's attack you you're gonna die and yeah there's you know what i will move you here and just light this on fire so whoever comes up through there will be on fire all right answering the question oh yeah so uh so i suggested doing constant bit rate so that it, there you have constant stream and that from what i've researched that tends to keep the video and audio in the stream from getting out of sync uh, so if, if you're a streamer and that's something you've run into, then check. It's in just one of the settings of OBS. Um, look for, and if you do a Google search for like constant bitrate OBS or variable bitrate OBS, it'll probably show you screens of where to find that setting. So give that a shot and let me know if it works. Uh, Paul J. Powers says, Richard Rewind, did you ever answer that what the worst movie we ever covered? Because... It's definitely Beverly Hills Ninja. <laughs> I think I would I would I would go with that, Paul. Except there was only that both of us covering it, so I don't think it could truly be the worst one. Just because we didn't both have let's see, you haven't okay. We both didn't we didn't have a third person agreeing with the tr tragicness of it. So let me pull that up. Recently, OBS uh, did a, a rewrite of their software. So now their, their interface for pulling in web URLs is way streamlined. Apparently they deleted 13,000 lines of code for the web source, uh, essentially the way that you can um, see the chat and see any alerts. All that is now streamlined. So I've noticed a vast improvement in just being able to pull up browsers and things. So if I go to retroreonpodcast.com slash episodes, and I filter by final rating. Let's look at Tragics Unanimous. So here are the ones to choose from. We have the Super Mario Brothers movie. I'm not going to count that or Barry's Not Included just because that was before we had the, the three ratings. Uh, so we have The Great Mouse Detective, Beverly Hills Ninja, uh, and Caravan of Courage and Ewok Adventure. So those are the the... Three person unanimous tragics. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go with Caravan of Courage and Ewok Adventure. It just, it, cause it had so much potential. I mean, really, Beverly Hills Ninja, how much potential could that really have? But Caravan of Courage, especially on the heels of like Star Wars and Return of the Jedi, come on, come on. You could have done so much better. So much better. Come on, Lucasfilms, get on the ball. And with less than four mech damage, I'm on the ball with that. Protect an old earth bar. Yeah, there, it's way over there. The little bar. 
at B7 is fine. So there's the answer to that, Paul. Uh, that did help me. Oh, wait. Paul says, LOL, I, I did a geek devotion on that one for victims and villains. Oh, yeah. Uh, you did for Beverly Hills Ninja uh, geek devotions? And that did help me. Okay. So what is the advantage of having Nightbot? Well, actually, I don't use Nightbot. That, okay, so this is your next question, Geek Devotions. That's an awesome one. What's the advantage of having Nightbot? I used Nightbot, and advantages of it, from what I found, are uh, chat moderation. Just more a bit more advanced chat moderation than you get from just the normal Twitch chat. Uh, you can also have it... Uh, do music like help with uh, moderating music if you play music on your stream and i think there's just some other functionality it can bring in i think you can use it to manage both twitch discord google uh there's it can manage lots of things at once i think um but i decided not to use it it was a little bit more is almost using a cannonball to kill a mosquito for me and I found that using stream elements, the chatbot that it has is exactly the, is it's certainly not as robust as I bought, but it's what it's perfect for my needs. So that's my non-answer for you, uh, Geek Devotions. <clears throat> Paul, it's definitely the war in my opinion, a worst. Uh, Caravan of Courage or Beverly Hills Ninja, Paul, is the worst to you. And then keep devotions. I'll drop it into the Discord later. Okay. No. Oh, these guys. Okay. Uh, so any other questions, guys? Those are some awesome ones so far. Any others? As I try to figure out what to do. Okay. So remember, I could shoot the building, knock this guy back into the flame. That's one option. I also need to take care of this guy attacking that building. So let's see. I need to assess what buildings are in, are in jeopardy. I have two buildings that are in jeopardy. So that's a lot easier to worry about than um, me in Jeopardy. Because I can move me. I can't move buildings. So given that, I think what I'll do is... I, oh, here's what I'll, here's one thing, one easy move. Nothing's... Okay. I'll move there and I'll swap with this guy so that he's attacking nothing. And also, he's going to take damage from whatever is emerging. So he's actually going to die. Next up, I have to worry about, let's see, what's, where are you shooting? You're shooting, where? Why are you shooting there? Oh, that's where my guy was. I'm like, why are you shooting at an emerging vec? That makes no sense. Oh yeah, my swap vec was there. Uh, now, where can you go? Where, where can you kill or hurt or maim? All the better. Well, I need to push you back. And I need to... Ideally, damage you. So what I'm going to do... Oh, you're going to take fire damage. So you're not. You're actually not going to block the emerging vec. All right, let's go here. Let's push you back into the air raid blast radius. And let's uh, go here and shoot this scarab back so that he is going to... Where is he attacking? Oh, okay. So I'm actually going to push him toward me by shooting behind him. So he's actually going to attack that square at A, let's see, G8, where there's nothing. Like, show. Boom. And now there's no buildings in threat. Uh, I'm not really in threat because this guy's going to die first because fire does damage first before anything else. And here we go. Let's see. Geek Devotions. Ah. Can you use stream elements and Nightbot at the same time? Yes, you can use multiple bots at the same time. Um, I'm not sure. You could probably, there are probably advantages to doing that. Uh, but I don't know what they are, unfortunately. If that's something you'd like me to research, if you would like me to come back next time and give you a, a better rundown of Nightbot, I will could absolutely do that for you. Just let me know. Uh, but uh, for now... Yeah, I don't have too much more to say about it. Oh, Paul was saying, again, Beverly Hills Ninja is the worst so far. Okay. I, I can't... I That's a totally valid opinion, Paul. 
I can't dispute that. Let's see, you're going to attack the building, but you're going to die first? Yeah, so I don't have to worry about this Hornet at D5 because the bombers are going to get him. I do have to worry about this one at C3 because he'll attack the building. Uh... And then I do have to worry about you. I do have to worry about you. But not too much, I don't think. Where can I move? I can move. No, I don't want to move there because then I'm in the blast radius. Oh, but I can move here and push. Like, I could move my artillery to, what is that? F6. Then I could shoot at F4, pushing the scarab at G4 back to H. So we'll do that, like this, and like that. So now he's attacking nothing. I don't have to worry about him because it's the last turn. He'll retreat. Uh, I do, don't have to worry about this guy. And then I'll just push this guy like show. And now he's attacking nothing. And we're, we we did good, guys. This is a really good one. No No casualties, no nothing. So good job, good job. <clears throat> okay, going back to the chat. Geek Devotions. So does your faith affect, if at all, which games you decide to play? Ooh. Paul says, definitely. Are you answering for me, Paul? Is that what you're doing? Uh, what's the person over there? Okay, and then Dale has a question, and then Geek Devotions has another question. Awesome, guys. Okay, so I'll try to answer these uh, succinctly. Uh, first off, does faith play a role in the games that I play? Yes, it does. Uh, because what I've decided, uh, I'll try, <laughs> I'll try to keep this from being a uh, long story, uh, a long story short too late. Several years ago, my wife and I decided to, um, get rid of a lot of the things in our lives, like, uh, uh, media wise like movies video games that had things of magic or uh or um uh like necromancy is that a thing like zombies vampires horrific elements uh to them we just got rid of them like donated them to the library i'm i was like i'm not burning any books i'm not doing that the live i'm sure this is for someone someone can else can have it i'm not gonna burn books over this uh, or movies for that matter. So we, we donated them to the library and then for a while we just lived like that. We didn't, we didn't engage in that type of media. Uh, we wouldn't watch horror movies. We wouldn't watch thing. The only things we were, uh, we felt like our consciences weren't being pricked by were like Lord of the Rings, Chronicles of Narnia, you know, the usual suspects of Christian were typically Christians wrote. So, oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that season allowed me to discern for myself what I really needed to be cautious of. And it turns out magical things aren't really uh, something that uh, I should really be that worried about because I'm not, if I experience like magic in a movie or in a game, I'm not then, I then don't have like a secret lust to be able to control the world through magic spells or anything like that. I'm just, uh, and rather I, it's just a, a fun sort of element of the story. However, I did notice that with horror movies, that is something that pricks my conscience because with horror movies, I tend to, I don't want that map. I don't like the kill at least seven with horror movies. I, I will, uh, I will live in fear after the movie for a time. Like horror movies are sticky for me typically, like supernatural horror, I should say. Movies of like aliens and like Predator or 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 aliens aren't aren't uh don't bother me. But supernatural horror does and and I'll like sort of live in a state of fear for a few days after seeing a movie like that. For instance, with The Sixth Sense when we covered it. The I don't know if you've seen it, but there's this one uh, girl in that movie that Haley Joel Osment's character is like 
looking under his bed, and all of a sudden she comes at him all like vomiting. No, no, it's inside his tent thing where you think he's safe, and she she's this dead girl because her spoiler alert, her um, mother, not mother in law, her stepmother poisoned her. So, but you don't know that she's just coming at Haley Joel Osment, just horrifically vomiting at him and stuff, and it's just this very, very grotesque scene and that just haunted me whenever i was like doing my like lock up the house at night checks um you know make sure everything's locked and all that uh i didn't want to walk in the dark because i would just see this and it's hard for me to go to sleep because that's in my mind and so i'm living in this fear when all i should do be doing is fearing god i'm not i'm not i'm actually fearing this the demonic essentially and not that I'm saying the the movie is inherently demonic or anything like that, but that's where I that's where I landed is that things that cause me to fear, um, not just like ah, but actually like dwell on fear after after it aren't good for me. So that's why that season where we got rid of everything was very valuable. So it's it's the same for games. I I won't get a game that has supernatural horror elements to it. So that's that's how my faith impacts my game. Also, I I have a sensitivities to highly sexualized content, so that's another thing that I won't engage with. Which is why mechs and suits are awesome. <laughs> okay. Then Dale had a question. Awesome, awesome question, Geek Devotions. Thank you so much for asking that. Drink some water. Oh, oh, oh. I think, Dale, you're referring to Friday, not Saturday. But he says, I know Saturday that you all could not record your show because one person was not prepared. Are there any contacts between you and guests to make sure you all are on the same page before that awkward moment happens? <laughs> yes, there are, Dale. We use um, Discord as the mechanism to both uh, try to build some community. We do that on Facebook as well. Paul does a great job managing our Facebook uh, group, but I try to head up Discord. And th that's a place where we both try to build community and also uh, work the logistics of uh, doing the podcast. Let's try to figure out. Now. Oh, tidal waves? That actually might work just fine. Let's go do that. Uh, so we use Discord for that. And the problem was that coming up to the 101 Dalmatians episode, excuse me, I had been on vacation. I was on vacation all of last week and I didn't have my computer. I had my phone and I could have still used my phone, but I was very out of it. Like I have a morning routine where I usually use the computer as part of it and do email and all that. And I was just totally out of it. And I... Did, wasn't preparing the guests very well to make sure that they were able to see the movie. And so it is really, it is really my fault. I mean, I'm the captain. I'm the ultimate responsibility of the pod. So that's what happened with that. Um, but I'm going to be checking in with him tomorrow and hopefully he'll be able to have seen the movie. And if so, we will do it this Friday. So you'll get a podcast this Friday and next Friday. Sorry to all you looking forward to the next Legend of Zelda part. That's not happening for a bit unless I get some spare time on like a Saturday to do it. But um, but uh, that's so. Yes, there are channels for that. But I didn't. When you don't utilize those channels, you might as well not have them. So thank you for that question, Dale. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I'm just gonna. Just, you guys have been channel. I'm gonna try just hit the questions. Geek Devotions have all. Have y'all ever thought about letting your wives take over the show or choosing a film of their personal liking for y'all? Uh, Paul, let them get their own podcast. <laughs> yeah, uh, we actually have. That is something that uh, we want to do. Um, it would probably be uh, my wife, Christy, Paul's wife, Valerie, and um, uh, probably someone like Danae. Uh, Celeste of Geek Devotions, if she would like to, yeah, I was. I, we've talked about doing a girls-only thing. Maybe the movie would be like 
Um, I know my wife and Paul's wife both both really love Man from Snowy River, so a movie like that. What am I doing? Okay, so haha, I know instantly the first thing I'm going to do. Well, I was going to say I'll get the scarab at E3 into the drink by swapping with him. But will I have to worry about these? Will I be able to push these guys away from what they're attacking? Well, let's see. Where can you move, dude? You can't really move anywhere that great. Uh, let's see here. You can... Where can... No, undo that move. I didn't mean to move you. So I can swap with the Scarab right there. I'll get hit and die because he does three damage. And anyway, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, so yes, we have thought about that Geek Devotions. And that's that's something I would like to see happen. Uh, but we just haven't had done anything definitive on that. Uh, Geek Devotions, LOL, Fahrenheit 451 affects you more than you thought. <laughs> Paul, J. Powers, Necromancy, and Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit. That's true, Paul, but those are used by the villains. I don't think there's any of the heroes that use... Oh, no, I guess the king does... Uh, Aragorn does, in a way... Uh, he's commanding them. That's. I'll have to think about that. That's a good point, Paul. Aragorn, in Return of the King, does command that, that legion of... Uh, of thieves and and backstabbers, I forget exactly what their qual qualities were, but that arm, that undead army, huh? So in, in a way, that's necromancy. I mean, he didn't create them, but still, he's utilizing them. I'll have to think about that. Again, it's not horrific, really, though. So that's that's something that that is, that is a factor. Um, let's see, Dale. So no Harry Potter for you. I think I'd be okay with Harry Potter. Oh, that that is something. I forgot about that. I for some reason magic when it's in our like universe, like not some fictional universe and like this happened in London or or the America. For some reason that bothers me. I'm not really sure why I haven't given it a lot of thought why it does, but for some reason that still does prick my conscience um to a degree. So uh, more to think about. Thank you guys for, for asking these probing questions because it is giving me more to think about and wrestle with, and that's that's a good thing. Uh, so is frailty sticky in a negative way? It's not for me, Paul, actually. It's it's actually not. I, even even when the the kid does the thing to the dad, it doesn't that doesn't bother me. I, I don't know why. <laughs> Paul, oh, so gross is sticky. <laughs> Gross can be sticky. That's true, uh, especially when it's like coupled with that James Horner score of horror. Uh, Geek version. Celeste would love to do something with Christy. She wants to get to know Mrs. Powers too. LOL. Ah, Geek Devotions. Our Women of Geekdom Month has a favorite for Celeste, and our our Women of Geekdom Month was a favorite for Celeste and our listeners. Awesome. Okay, I th I'm, I think I'm all cut up. Cut up. Blue -blue. I'm all blue -blue. I'm all caught up on the questions now, guys. Those were some awesome ones. Thank you so much. I will take, uh, I will take one more. So whoever asks the next question, I will do. And then if anyone asks a follow another question, that will be my question to start off next next uh, Monday. Paul, uh, Geek Devotions. I feel like fantasy and magic magically fantasies are different from demonic horror. Oh, absolutely. They are different. I'm not saying they're the same at all. For some reason, it pricks my conscience, and I, I try to be cognizant of the things that do prick my conscience about what I watch. So, that's just what it is. I'm not, and again, again, I don't think I've said this. This is only for me. What, what affects you? Any of you is going to be completely different. I do not judge any of you for what you decide to watch. <coughs> Unless it's someone else's stream at the time I'm streaming. Then I judge you. <laughs> Kidding. Kidding. C calm down. It's okay. It's okay. I love you all anyway. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. 
Dale, fun question. Okay, so here's our last one. What happened to your Saturday morning stream? Oh, that is a good question, Dale. What happened to that? Because, geez, Francisco, you would go on early morning Fridays and Saturdays, and it was nice. It was nice. It was some, I could watch you talk like this really softly because people were asleep. I mean, sure, it put me back to sleep, but that can be okay. Why don't you do this anymore, Francisco? <laughs> So what happened with that, Dale, was, oh, what about that? That's not a bad idea. Oh, but then I'm right. Oh, no, that's fine, though. Sorry, I just realized a possible option, guys. No, because there's a building there. Never mind. I don't have a possible option. There's no options here. Oh. Oh, actually, no, no, that's, that is good, except I still get that hit. But I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Okay, we'll do that. And then push you. Where are you shooting? Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> so what happened to those? It was a time thing, Dale. I was getting to a point where I was just like burning the, the candle at both ends. I'd still kind of do that in a way. I should get more sleep than I am. I, I had on vacation, I had one morning where I, I, uh, I asked Christy to take the kids in the morning so I wouldn't have to take them. Because uh, usually I try to let her sleep. And... So I was able to sleep, and I got, like, a little bit more than seven hours, and I felt so good that day. <laughs> I mean, it was, like, my mood was great. It was, it was so nice. <laughs> I'm like, why don't I do this more? But, uh, alas, it's mainly for that reason. I did, though, recently, guys, I did stop. Um, I did... Uh, I cut back my days working. I, at my second job, I was working two nights a week. Now it's only one night. And so I don't really know what that feels like because I, I didn't work at all during vacation. But having an extra night, so now I only work Wednesday nights as opposed to Saturday nights. So I may decide to reintroduce a morning stream. Was that something? I, I mean, quick poll here, guys. If I if I wake up and start streaming from like four in the morning PST to six something like that, is that something you'd want to be uh, online to watch? I guess for most of you over in the great uh, Louis Louisiana, it's that'd be six your time to eight p uh, a.m. But uh, let me know. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. All this thinking about, I'm going to pull the leaper to myself. Right? Like this. Now I'm going to push... I'm going to move my artillery mech back a little bit. Nope, that's not far back enough. Right there. Now I'm going to shoot this ground. It's going to push the leaper back one. And now he will attack the... Hopefully... Oh, what, what, oh, I was hoping the turn order was the leaper before the, the hornet. So he would kill it before he had a chance. But alas... He's going to attack this building, but he'll only destroy one. So, though my power grid's getting pretty low, which isn't great. But with that, now at least I'll push this guy back. And then he'll attack me still. Is there another move that doesn't involve me dying? Not really. Oh, well. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take the hit. I'd rather that than a building. Plus... He'll get hit from this, from what's emerging. So, yeah, it's a time thing. I hope to do, I, I would love to stream more often than I do, especially when things like this past podcast snafu happens and it's keeping SNES Quest from happening for like three weeks in a row, essentially. So uh, I would like to open up another time where I could stream. Great questions, guys. Great questions. Thank you so much. To everyone that watched, I know I didn't really introduce intro this section so much, but thank you for watching this installment of Streams, Pods, and God. I am I am currently, and I have been and continue to be Francisco Ruiz from the Retro Rewind Podcast. Check us out at RetroRewindPodcast.com if you want to hear our opinions about movies and video games from 15 or more years ago. And if you like this video, want to see more of it, uh, like it, share it with your friends, and... Uh, let us know what the answer to the question is before silence falls. I don't know. Catch you later. Bye. Okay.
So that's the end of that section. Now, let's see, what was the last... Uh, I should have said what the question was next, but... Geek Devotion. So everyone...